to the Top Mountain Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm very, uh, very excited. It's my first interview, so. Oh, dope. Um, yeah. Well, I discovered you from your song, All Mine, uh, and I I really liked your album, uh, Distance. Uh, first thing I want to ask you is, if you could just let everybody know where you're from and how it was growing up in your area. Um, I grew up in a small town. I'm still there. Uh, it's just inside of Toronto. It's called Oshawa. Um, it's 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 okay you know it's not like anything special i'd say um but there is definitely not a lot of opportunities here for creative people or creativity so i try to go to toronto as much as possible yeah talk about um the influence of music in toronto since you've been a kid like how has it evolved and what were you listening to as a kid and what are you listening to like now when you plug in your own aux cord uh drake obviously being from toronto is like the biggest thing um drake in the weekend um i think when i was younger obviously i listened to a lot of uh like if you're reading this too late like that was kind of my shit back then um i wouldn't say i listen to too many toronto artists now um but i'd say like like i guess party next door is still a toronto artist to listen to um obviously drake i'm excited for his new album um outside of toronto like i recently i listen to a lot of indie music um like brockhampton and people affiliated with them i like them a lot um there's this girl named deb never she's amazing one of my favorite yeah she's dope i know who that is yeah yeah one of my favorite indie artists uh right now um and um i like the whole opium scene ken carson yeet that's kind of my my sound right now yeah, I was gonna say, uh, that's kind of where your sound is, uh, at this point. When when did you start making music, and when did, or like let's let's say when did you first have the idea in your head, like oh maybe I want to start making music for a living. Uh, well, my dad uh used to be a rapper when he was younger. Uh, used to be like signed to a label in Pittsburgh. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, so I used to get a lot of my music from him. Like I, like he introduced me to like Kanye West and people like that. Um, and then when I turned like 10, I just started making beats on GarageBand for fun. And uh, I'm only 18 now, but there's a, uh, for the past eight years, I don't think I've ever really looked back from there. So when was the, how old were you when you first dropped your music publicly? Because, you know, there's a, there is a difference between like, you know, fucking around on your computer with your friends. But once you drop it publicly, like anyone could say whatever they want about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say like I dropped like a couple like beat tapes when I was younger, like 11, 12 on like SoundCloud. Like they're pretty awful, but like they're there, I think still. Um, I think I dropped my first like song where I was like the, like the main artist on it uh, when I was in. I was like. 14 14 that's young yeah holy shit yeah yeah so who would you say some of your biggest influences are like when it goes to making your music like your sound who would you say some of your influences are um radiohead that's Uh, fire that's a dope answer i love um like in rainbows is one of my favorite albums of all time and i love the fact that when you're listening to Radiohead, you can kind of 
uh, feel the fact that it, it almost sounds like they're not even in the room when they're making it, like they're in a different planet. And uh, that's something I really admire. Um, and Kanye, definitely. I'd say if I had to pick a top three, it'd be Radiohead, Kanye, and Frank Ocean, for sure. Yeah, those are dope choices, bro. And um, I love what you said about Radiohead. They're so underrated. You're right. Like, when you listen to them, it's literally like they're somewhere else. It's crazy. Yeah, like, the first time I listened to Radiohead, I I was in class, uh, just, like, listening to music because I was not paying attention. And I, like, I heard in Rainbows in full for the first time, and it was, like, a like a ethereal experience. It didn't feel like music like that was even possible to make so yeah i think that's how, how i feel like when i listen to someone like when i first discovered kid cuddy or like yeah like when i listen to tame impala mm -hmm. so what do you think um well actually let's talk about your album distance right um so you dropped that album this year talk about how you got the name and what was your process going into it like what's your music making process when it comes to making that album were you like i want fans to click it like from the start to finish or was it did you put together like your best shit at the time or how did that go uh i've been making music like off and on like with me like singing for like a couple years now and uh like a year and a half ish and i think that the the project was just kind of a compilation of my favorite songs i had made over like the, the past couple of years yeah. um some of them were from like i used to just drop on soundcloud only and like like a couple of them were from that era um of my music uh but some of it is newer like it was some stuff i had made like a week before i dropped it um it really was just the fact that i needed to get more music out there because i wanted to start taking it seriously yeah. so i came up with distance because like i said i like the idea of like an ethereal experience something that it uh takes you far away in a sense and the cover is like a painting of me sitting on the moon and it uh it uh it connects to my next project i'm working on like thematically so it's um it all just kind of tied together you know you know yeah the, i thought the thing. the album cover was dope like you know you. the name yeah um yeah. how much thought do you put in as a as an artist like to that kind of shit like do you like did you have the music together and then you kind of think of the name or did you have the name and like the concept already and then you put the music to it um for this one the concept came after i made all the songs but for things that i work on now that are i'm taking more seriously i genuinely think of a concept beforehand and then i kind of uh build uh songs inside that concept yeah no, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, So what's your view, like, you being in Canada? Like, is the view different for an underground artist there? Like, do you, like, do you view artists like, oh, they're not that big until people in the U.S. are playing them? Or do you think they could be just as big in Canada? H how do you view it being there? Um, There are definitely artists here that, like, people would know that people like people here would know people in the s wouldn't know um so i think that it, there definitely comes a time where you need to spread your music uh like across the world because otherwise you might just get stuck being that guy from toronto that had that one song there's a lot of people like that so but i mean i think anyone can say that from any city really yeah because like there's always that one guy that everyone knows from your city that no one else knows so i think that it really just uh comes down to how well you market your music i guess mm -hmm. um so i ask anyone who comes on the podcast this no matter how famous they are no no matter how underground if you could have three dream features from anybody any artist any genre dead or alive who would it be dead or alive yep mac miller that's my favorite rapper yep that's awesome mine like he's top three for me um yeah, Mac Miller is like, like I, I think I would work really well with Mac Miller on a song. The I used to just, artist. I used to just make like Mac Miller ass songs because I didn't know how to make music, so I would just pretend to be Mac Miller. So <laughs> I think I could, I, I think I could, I think I could make a song that Mac Miller would fit on because I think like I listen to his music so much I can think like how he thinks in a way. Um. 
Frank Ocean, definitely. Uh, I have a blonde tattoo. Um, he's his that album like changed how I view music in a way, and I think that he's like one of the probably my favorite songwriter ever. And I would love to just like write a song with him to like learn how he thinks in yeah, that kind of way. Great artist. Still hate yeah. him for not coming to Coachella though. I was there. Yeah, me too. No way, you were there. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 were uh, weekend two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we were both there. That's crazy. Yeah, I was in uh, I was in the VIP section uh, with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah, I was pissed when he didn't go on. Yeah, I know. I was, I was, I was furious. I'm more glad that he didn't go and I wasn't there on the first weekend though, because like if he pulled that shit on stage and then like I would have been like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, and I, I, I was like, I got the tattoo before I went to Coachella, so like, I was like so excited, and yeah. then I, people were put, my friends were like posting memes of my tattoo but they put blink 182 over it that's so funny yeah i, I was so mad i was so mad um yeah, so who's, who's the last person you'd put on the list fuck that's really hard um yeah i picked a rapper and i picked a r&b artist or i guess indie so i'll, I'll pick a more indie artist um um mac demarco dope dope choice no one's ever said I, that before I really, really like Mac DeMarco. And again, like with Mac Miller, I, I think that I would be able to make a very good song with them. Yeah, that's fire, bro. I love the list. Um, uh, Mac, Frank, and then DeMarco. Great list. Um, where do you see your career, let's say one year from today? I didn't really start taking my music seriously until like this year. Yeah. Um, so I think that now that I have an idea of like how to like use my money wisely when it comes to marketing and things like that and uh, learning how to make more connections. Uh, I think that I could definitely see myself having a small fan base within the next year for sure. I, um, I'm not really interested in uh, following the whole idea that people have right now of, you know, making singles and things that are just going to get popular for like five minutes and then they're going to go away. Um, I make music because I like music. I don't make it because I want money. So I think that I'm just going to continue to do the stuff that I like to do and work with actual like good producers and not just get my beats off YouTube. And and I hoping to have like a, a real dedicated fan base in the next year. Yeah, I liked your answer because that, that's a realistic answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, you are you are pretty new, even though you've been making music for a while, like at least taking it seriously and you know, your public image online. Yeah. And um, I think that's important too, to do it because you love it. Not, you're not like chasing, you know, like money for it or, or clout or something like that. Like it's really because you enjoy making music. Yeah. Um, I want to, I want to be that guy that like takes a year to like make an album. Like I don't want to make an album every three months. Like it's not what I'm interested in. Yeah. No, that's dope. Um, I think that makes the music better too. You're not just throwing shit out there. Like, you know, you're taking your time and um, you always see the best artists like they take time. The ones that stay around are the people that actually care about making music. So, yeah, no doubt. Um, What do you think you need personally? Like if you could say like one or two things as obviously you're an independent artist right now. What do you think you need most to take your career to the next level? Um. Stop getting shot at. Yo, I was at a show the other... So, like, last year, I went to a show. Because I used to do what you do. And I did one... Like, I used to just interview artists and shit. And I got one opportunity to interview this big artist. It was Young Tory. And I was going to do that. and do. I was doing photography at the show, and I got shot up. So, Damn. if I could get... If I could stop getting shot at when I'm trying to do good things for my career, that would be one thing. <laughs> two would be um uh um i think i just want to work with more artists i think personally i'm very much a collaborative person and i haven't really been able to do that yet because i just kind of make music in my bedroom but you know like i said i go to toronto a lot and i've met a lot of cool people and even just like through like discords and like reddits like you meet like insane talented people so yeah, you do. i uh 
I'm just kind of thinking that I need, uh, I need to reach out more and uh, have people reach out to me because I'm really interested in working with anyone. So, yeah. So, what can your uh, fans expect from you, or like anyone who checks this out and discovers you through this? Uh, what What can we expect next from you? I have an EP coming out in October. I this is the first place that I've said that, but it's called Gone Too Soon. Um, it's gonna have some uh some Lucy's that didn't make my album and didn't make the next one. Um and I have an album I've been working on for like a really long time. And I'm just how how long do you think? Um I wrote one of the songs like three years ago. Oh wow. But it didn't like come to fruition. Um but I just I just write songs all the time that mean something to me and I think that I have like a really interesting concept that like stays throughout the entire album so i want to hopefully release that next year do you think it's hard um you know so you've been working on this album for a long time obviously it's like very important you know you want to as an artist of course you want to make it perfect do you think it's hard to you know release um other music like for people to hear when you're like so locked in and that kind of idea and that that concept of the album Definitely. That's why I'm trying to release this EP so I have stuff for people to listen to while I work on it. Um, I also just like the idea of having more music on my page so people yeah. can click on stuff. Yeah, do you... I, I ask, I'm i only asking this because I've talked to a lot of other artists about this, like when they're in an album mode. Do you, do you like consider the other songs you're releasing, do, are they not good enough, you think, to make your album? Like, are they throwaway songs or they're just... They're good, but just not in the concept? They just don't fit. Um, yeah. Like, I have a couple that I was like, this maybe could fit in a certain place in the album, but, like, thematically, it, it makes sense. But it just isn't, a, I guess, like you say, it's not up to qual the quality that I'm looking for. Um, Not to say that it's a bad song, but it just, I have this idea of this, like, amazing project, and I, I hear that song, and, like, that's a cool song, and, like, I want people to hear it, but I don't think it fits in this idea of this, like, big epic thing I'm making. Yeah, no, 100%, bro. Um. So before we get out of here, if you just want to let everybody know where they could find your music and just spell out, um, you know, how you spell your artist name, where they could find everything. And also, if there's anything you want to say, the mic's yours, bro. Yeah, perfect. Um, So I do have an EP coming out next month. Good, gone too soon. I'm really excited about it. Uh, Just to have people listen to new music. A lot of people that I'm friends with and people that are around me, like they haven't even heard any of it, so. I'm That's pretty dope. excited about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear it. Thank you. Um, and uh, this album, man, it's it's sick. Like, I'm really excited about it. Um, like I'm yeah, I can see, be... I can see on your face, like, yeah, like you've been cooking this shit up for a minute. In a long time. Um, I'm really excited about it. Like, it's it has like a whole story kind of thing going on, and I'm working with animators to make videos, and I'm working with like people to make a book. Like, it's fucking sick. Like, oh, so this is the. Do you think this is the one, like, this is this is the one you're going all in on, like? Yeah, I don't even care about if I get popular off it. I just want to make it because I love it. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I have this idea for lots of different things that can connect to it. So I'm really, really excited about it. Um, If you want to follow me or check me out, I'm my artist name is Hunter, but with an X instead of a U, so H-X-N-T-E-R. Uh, my last name is Petch, P-E-T-C-H, so that's my Instagram, Hunter Petch. And, um... Yeah, I would love for anyone to come check me out. I genuinely just love the shit, and I love the fact that people think that my music is somewhat interesting. So I hope that you guys can check me out and stick around to see what I have in store because I think that it's awesome. Yeah, dude. I um, first of all, you know, thank you for coming on, bro. Uh, yeah, of course. I obviously reached out because I really enjoyed your music. Um, I thought the distance album was dope, and yeah, I was really curious of you know, when I checked your Apple music out was of why there wasn't more, but now after talking to you, I, it makes perfect sense. I cannot, I'm definitely going to enjoy the EP, but I cannot wait for the album. Sounds like, you know, everything's gearing towards that. And, um, yeah, just thanks for coming on, bro. If there's anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll give you my number as well. And if there's anything you need from me, bro, even after your promo shit's over with, just ask. And, uh, Thank you. 
we'll gladly, you know, post it up for you for free. Anything we can do to help. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Have a good day. Stay safe, all right? You too. Appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt.